Welcome to Life as God Intended. I'm Don, and I'm certainly delighted that you've joined me for another broadcast. Thanks for subscribing to the channel and giving me a, a thumbs up for this video. And please uh, make yourself um, available to over 400 additional videos that we have on LGI, the abbreviations for Life as God Intended. So there's a wealth of material that we've developed over the years for your edification and encouragement. Well, in today's broadcast, I'd like to talk about my recent bike car accident, which happened on January 2nd, the official New Year's Day uh, that we celebrate as a nation. And uh, I'd like to talk about what God's taught me through this time. People have asked me, on several occasions what lessons I had learned through experiences experiencing that very traumatic uh, accident which on several occasions uh, not only barely almost took my life um, certainly the day that it occurred as I laid there in the street having been run over by a vehicle so um, what has God uh, revealed to me through this bike car accident I think the, the greatest thing that God has revealed to me is that God, in fact, is greater. Uh, that, uh, as the scripture says in 1 John 4.4, 4, you are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Well, that verse is so precious to me because obviously I, I am a child of God and that particular day it was evident that I was just a child uh, laying helplessly in a roadway having been hit and then run over uh, by the car that I was hit by. Um, and so I was at the mercy of God and uh, God allowed me to overcome the obstacles and the obvious threat that uh, Satan attempted to use on several occasions, not only laying there in the road and the unfortunate um, help, if you want to call it that, that I received from the paramedics who contributed to uh, almost having me killed, I won't go into the details, but the way they treated me was totally unprofessional. And later when they learned the severity of my injuries, they were shocked. Uh, so um, God obviously was greater. Greater is he. Greater was the living reality of Christ in me that he did not allow uh, Satan to take me out at that time or in the days that would follow where there were very close calls as to whether or not I would live or die. So as 1 John 4, 4 says, you are from God, little children, and uh, you have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than who is in the world. And then secondly, I'd like to talk about the implications of what I learned, what got, what, what has been revealed to me since that time. Obviously, laying there on that uh, roadway, the first thing that flashed into my mind was the injuries that I had incurred were so severe I could feel uh, the multiple 15 broken ribs and broken collarbone, uh, two punctured lungs. I could feel those bones shifting around inside of my chest cavity. Uh, so, um, my first thought and impression was, I don't know that I'm going to survive this. And so, uh, the seven things that God has shown me that I'd like to share with you today is, first, that God is greater, as we just read there in 1 John 4.4. 4. God's greater than our circumstances. God's greater than the situations that we find ourselves. And God's in control. Another and very important lesson that uh, God's impressed upon me is that I have a greater sensitivity now. 
Um, that particular day, as I said, was January 2nd. It was the official New Year's Day that uh, our nation celebrates the new year. And so everything shut down. It's a holiday. And two of my sons and I had gone on a, a wonderful fishing trip in the Indian River Lagoon. We started in Vero Beach and we uh, fished all the way down to Fort Pierce, uh, then had lunch and then came on back to Vero. It was a beautiful, uh, hot summer day, uh, even though it was in the middle of January. We're blessed here in Florida. And uh, so I got home about four o'clock and uh, I had been cycling. I'd gotten a, a wonderful uh, kind of gifted bike, a road bike, brand new. And I had been traveling 10 to 15 miles a day on my bike. And so here it was four o'clock in the afternoon, bright sunny day. And I thought it would be perfect to just go and do an hour ride. I have to admit, my wife said, are you sure you want to go? You've been fishing all day. And, and then after that, I do now recall a little still voice, a prompting of the Lord that uh, concurred with my wife. You sure you sure you should do this? And uh, I didn't really, I wasn't sensitive. I wasn't sensitive to what the Lord or my wife's uh, promptings were. I thought, you know, I can do this, which is usually an indication that we better be careful of any time we think we can do something. And so I wasn't sensitive. I jumped on the bike and I hadn't been gone uh, five minutes, 10 minutes at the most before this terrible accident occurred. And so uh, since that time, um, I'm more sensitive. I'm more sensitive to the promptings of God. And I'm not suggesting that every time um, I respond immediately to his promptings. Uh, just the other day, uh, something to do uh, with a family member, and um, I had a prompting uh, from the Lord. And, and I, think, I think what I'm learning is something, I, and I tell my counselees all the time, but you know, you have to practice what you preach. And, and that is that oftentimes when I'm processing the thoughts within the soul, within the mind, um, I'm not always appreciating that those thoughts have a source, they have an origin. Sometimes I'm just uh, processing them as if they're just my thoughts, which obviously they're more than just my thoughts. And on that particular occasion, once again, I processed this thought process of something that I could do, but I didn't, and then later found out that that really was the Lord trying to protect somebody within the family and uh, because I didn't take that prompting they were affected by it so definitely have a greater sensitivity now since the uh, the bike uh, car accident uh, thirdly I have a greater confidence um, since I've been able to come back to work come back to counseling here at Cross Life obviously life has got intended as an extension of uh, Cross Life Ministries, where I have been working now since uh, 2000, become the executive director uh, since 2003. And so January, February, all of January, pretty much I was in the hospital 23 days, and then February uh, recuperating from significant injuries, um, just kind of uh, home and in bed um, and doing nothing. And then towards the end of uh, February, the beginning of March, being able to get out, do a little bit more. And then by mid-March, was able to come back temporary, part-time uh, to counsel and have been doing so since in between doctor's appointments and lab work and certain things like that. But as I've come back, kind of without even initially being aware of it, there's been a greater confidence there's been a greater confidence uh, that um, God is the one that obviously has equipped me to do what I do. He's the one that's working through me. Uh, he's the one that spared my life. And so there's a greater confidence to engage in and be aware of what the Spirit of God is revealing as I work with people uh, with their individual issues. And fifth, uh, fourthly, there is a greater provision. This one's amazing. Um, 
Obviously, I was without, I wasn't working for those uh, two months. And uh, initially, uh, the insurance company, uh, because a bicycle is considered considered a vehicle uh, in by Florida state law, I reported this to my car insurance company and they were going to cut me a check of 60% of my lost wages. And so we had talked with them, they had agreed to everything. Uh, and then at the last minute, uh, I received a letter from the insurance company stating that they weren't gonna send me anything. Uh, that none of the PIP that uh, I had requested for lost wages uh, would be given to me. And so they said I was 100% responsible uh, for the accident, which is still under investigation. And obviously that's not the way I feel, <laughs> but I'm not here to discuss the particulars of what happened other than to say there's other responsibility in this accident other than me. And so they pulled the check. They didn't send me the funds. And obviously not working two months here at the ministry, no paycheck. Um, I, I've always uh, depended upon God's provision. Uh, here at Cross Life, we don't have set fees. We don't charge a set fee. We've always asked people to, to donate for the services that are rendered. And that's how we've trusted God. I've always adapted kind of Hudson Taylor's uh, statement that I learned way back in Bible school and the early 70s where Hudson said that God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. And so I didn't really worry about it. Uh, and others began to hear about what had happened. Um, my good friend Jim Fowler uh, started to go fund me uh, on Facebook and then others began to make donations through our website at cross-life.org and others through a life as God intended. And the donations began to pour in. And at the end of those two months, I was, I was amazed, not that I didn't believe that God could do something like this. I wasn't necessarily expecting it, uh, but needless to say, it was as if not only did I receive the um, amount of money that I would normally have received had I received a paycheck, but there was more and much more. And so there was a greater provision. And it just reinforced the fact that, uh, Don, God's the one that takes care of you. God's the one that writes your paychecks. God's the one that provides. And, and of course, I know those things, but this was a real powerful reminder of such. And then fifthly, um, God is my uh, provision. And it kind of Bills or protector, I should say. God is my protector. Not only my provision, but he's the one uh, that has protected me through all this. And there have been several times since the course of my hospitalization. Uh, part of it you might refer to as somewhat malpractice, oversights, however you want to talk about it. But there were several occasions where my life um, could have been lost because somebody wasn't uh, somebody wasn't paying attention to what was going on. And it was only because of the prayers of, of the thousands of people on Facebook and friends and family that were lifting me up in prayer that, um, that I didn't pass on. And so uh, God's protection was upon my life. And I was very, very appreciative and very, very aware of that. And, and that's why I say this next statement that there was a, I have a greater appreciation for answered prayer. As I just alluded to, literally, there were thousands of people on Facebook alone that were praying for me and people in my community that uh, I didn't even know were aware of my accident, but they had become aware and they'd been praying and their families had been praying and churches were praying. And so literally the prayers of the saints um, not only uh, kept me going, but I believe were the reason that I healed as nicely and as really as fast as I did. I think it was divine intervention uh, by the Lord. And so once again, I have a greater appreciation for answered prayer. And then finally, um, I have a greater appreciation uh, for purpose, God's purpose in my life. Philippians 1.21, uh, for me to live, as Paul said, 
is Christ, and to die is gain. I didn't fear death, but God uh, made it clear it wasn't my time, uh, that his life within me was something that he wanted to continue to express through me uh, to others. Uh, back in 2009, when I was in the Philippines and doing missionary work, and I was flying out of Vow City uh, as we were taken off from that runway, I'll never forget looking over at a building and seeing this signage on the side of the building, the top of the building, and down the other side. And as I looked and read, it said that others may live. And the Lord immediately spoke to me and said, Don, uh, that's cross life. Uh, that is your ministry. That's your purpose, that others may live. I'm pouring my life in you so that you allow me to minister to others through you. And then about five years ago now, this November, we started Life as God Intended, which was the extension and, and the understanding of a deeper revelation of, of what in fact my purpose is. That not only would I experience Christ's life, life, his life, his eternal life, his resurrection life as mine, but this greater purpose, this life as God intended would spill over and touch and impact others. So I just wanted to share those seven things that God had showing me, uh, shown me through my bicycle car accident. So many people have inquired what lessons that I've learned. And certainly I've learned that I'm loved uh, on a greater level than I even imagined before. Uh, loved by many of you. And I thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your continued prayers. Still have a surgery that's uh, going to be probably scheduled the end of May, beginning of June, but just trusting God through it all. Thank you for uh, watching, tuning in today. I love to hear from you, but please give me your comments below and or send me an email. Um, and thanks for sharing this ministry with others that they also might experience life as God intended.